Hey Thunkers, this is Simon from Thunkable and welcome to another video in our advanced tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to use both the web API component and the text-to-speech component. The web API part of this tutorial is relatively simple, but you can find more detailed and advanced web API examples in some of our other web API videos. I encourage you to check those out so that way you can try to see what you can build with different databases. So let's go over the two main components that we're going to be using, the web API component. So first of all, API stands for Application Programming Interface. And the web API is just another type of API that allows you to receive data from the internet that can be from a public or private data source. So you can think of it as going to a restaurant. Once you're there, you'll get a menu card and you can choose an item from the menu. And a little while later, you'll be served that food. That's exactly what using a web API is like. You have a database full of information and you can go through that information and pick the parts that you want. Now the text to speech component simply takes in some text as input and it reads it out loud to you. So let's take a look at how this app works. So when you open up the app, you'll see this get advice button. And once you click on it, advice should be read back to you. So let's try it out. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. And that's pretty much it. And every time you click the button, you'll get a different piece of advice. All that we did was connect to the advice database and what they do is that they give us some advice in text format. We take that advice that's in text and we pass it to the text to speech component, which then reads it out loud. So let's start making this app. We're going to start by designing and filling in some of the components that we need for our screen. So this app just has one screen and when the user clicks on the get advice button, they'll start hearing the advice being read back to them. So let's start building screen one. The first thing that we want to do is rename the screen to be the get advice screen. And this is just so we know what the screen does. Now let's add in the components that we'll need. So we'll add in a column. And in that column, we want to add in a button. We'll change the name of the button to be the get advice button. And again, this is just so that we know what this button does. And we'll change the text of it to be get advice. And remember, you can design this app however you want. You can change it to different colors. You can add in different pictures for the background just to customize it a little bit. So that's pretty much it for design. But we need to add in two more very important components. And that is the web API component. And remember, this just allows your app to talk to a data source. And the next thing we want to add is the text to speech component. This just takes in some text and it reads it out loud. Great. So now we can start programming this app. So let's go to the blocks for that. The first thing that we want to do is set up a block where we can store the advice that we get from the database in. And we can do this using variables. Variables are just placeholders that can store some information in them until you need to use it. So we'll start by going to the variables drawer and taking this initialize app variable name to block. And we'll just name this advice because we're going to be storing the advice text in here. Now we'll leave this block to be for now and we'll come back to it later. We want to start getting the advice after our get advice button has been clicked. So the first thing we have to do is take the when advice button click block. Now we want to start programming the web API component, which is going to allow us to get in contact with the advice database and get information from them. So the first block that you'll need is the from web API set URL to block. And in this part over here, we need a URL. You can think of a URL as kind of like a street address where the URL is just telling you the location of the information. Now, in order to find the URL, we're going to have to go on the documentation page for the advice API. So to get to the advice API documentation, you can just type into Google advice slip API and it should be the first link. And you can see on their website that they tell you that this is the URL they want you to use. So we're going to copy this URL and we're going to paste it in the text part of the set URL block. Now we're ready to start receiving data from the advice database. So how we set ourselves up for this is we go to the web API drawer and we get this in web API called get block. Now this block is made up of response, status, and error, but we really only need to worry about the response part of this because that is where all the advice and the information coming from the advice database is going to be stored in. So we're back here on the advice slip documentation page and we're just going to take a quick look at what the information that they're returning to us looks like. So you can see here that they say that it returns a random advice slip as a slip object. So we're going to click on this 
and it tells you what a slip object means. So they're going to give us a unique ID for the advice slip, which we don't really need to worry too much about, but we really need to worry about getting this advice part back. So that's what we're going to be taking out of the response that they give us. What we want to do is store the response or the advice that the database gives back to us into our advice variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the set app advice to block and we're going to add that here. Now we're going to go into the object drawer and we're going to get this get property name of object block. And here we're going to type in advice because that is what we want from the code. Now we're going to take another one of these blocks the get property property name of object and here we're going to type in slip the reason that we typed in slip is because our documentation told us that we're getting a slip object back which contains an advice portion and now we're going to take a get object from json block and connect the response block to it now i know that was a lot but let me go over why we're doing this basically the information that's coming from the database is in json format JSON just stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And in order to be able to use that information in our app, we need to convert it into a format called Object Format. Object Format is the format that our app can understand. So what this combination of blocks is doing is that it's saying, take the response that we get from the website and go to the slip object of it. And in that slip object, you'll find advice and put that into our advice variable. This whole process of converting from one data format to another is called parsing data in computer science. So again, just to make it super clear, let's look at the documentation again. They told us that we're going to be getting the information back in a slip object, which has smaller categories in it like slip ID and advice. The only thing that we want from them is advice. So that's why we put our property name as advice and slip. Great, so at this point, we should have the advice text in our app advice variable. Now, all we have to do is pass that app advice variable into our text-to-speech component so that way it can read it out loud. So to set up the text-to-speech, we're going to go into the text-to-speech drawer and we'll get this from text to set default language block. And you can set it to any language that you like. Um, let's just set it to English. And next, you want to take the in text to speech call speak block. Now we need to tell this text to speech component what we want it to read. And we want it to read the advice that we got from the database. So we'll go into the variables drawer and we're just going to take out the app advice variable and attach that here. So this block over here is just telling the app that we want it to read the advice that we got from the database. And that's everything that you needed for this app. So let's quickly live test it to make sure it's working the way we want it to. All right, so we have this get advice button and all we have to do is click on it and we'll hear some advice. So let's try that out. Identify sources of happiness. And remember, you can just add different colors, add different backgrounds, whatever you want to personalize your app a little bit. Awesome, so you now know how to use two components together, the web API component and the text-to-speech component. Again, if you want to see more detailed examples of web APIs, you can look at the different tutorials in the web API series. And we'll also include a link in the description box about a list of web APIs that you can go through and see what you can build with different companies' databases. So we'll be creating more API tutorials as well as more advanced feature tutorials for you, and we look forward to seeing what you build. So thanks for thunking.